Hello everyone. Hope this finds you all well wherever you are. It's Dr. Kazi Rahman here. Welcome to Epi Minutes. Today is Sunday, the 24th of March, 2024. In today's session, we are going to talk about confounding again. You remember that last time we talked about what is confounding? How does it happen? In today's session, we'll talk about how to control for it. We know that if X is the exposure of interest, Z is the outcome of interest, and Y is a third factor, then Y is a confounder. If Y can independently cause Z, y is related to x, y is not on the causal pathway between x and z. We talked about this in more detail in the previous Epiminutes session on confounding how does it happen. Now, in order to control for a potential confounder, where we need to intervene? We need to intervene here the relationship on the relationship between y and x let's go back to this schematic diagram where we are dealing with an exposure and outcome and there is a third variable which can be a potential confounder and we know the three characteristics of a potent of a potential confounder it can be able to independently cause the outcome it is related to the exposure and it is not on the causal pathway. And in order to control for a potential confounder, we know that confounding effect is a problem with our data set, so we can control for it. And in order to control for that, we need to intervene here. How we can control for potential confounders in an epidemiological study? We can do that at the design stage we can do that at the analysis stage. At the design stage, we can do we can do randomization, restriction, and matching in order to control for a potential confounder. At the analysis stage, we can go for stratification and regression models. Controlling confounding at design stage, randomization is one of the best ways of controlling for a potential confounder at the design stage, but it is limited to intervention studies. It tends to balance both known and unknown confounders, but it does not guarantee. Here's an example. Uh, the study was on safety and immunogenicity of tetravalent rhesus based rotavirus vaccine in Bangladesh. Later, this vaccine was withdrawn for its side effects. It was causing intussusception after the vaccine was introduced to the population in other parts of the world. Now, if you look at this table, usually we present this table one, comparing the baseline characteristics of the, uh, of the intervention group and the control group. And we can see that, yes, there are some good effect of randomization. We can see similar distribution of the characteristics of the study participants between the two groups. You can also see this is a paper that was published more than 20 years ago. You can also see that they have presented the p-values, but in the recent days, recent years, uh, the scientists, even the consort diagram people, and even the journals are saying that we may not need this this p value to test whether the baseline characteristics are similar or not between the intervention group and control group because it's not only about this p value but it also depends on which characteristic can actually cause influence the outcome in how much uh, in in what strength so just focusing on this p value and then including these characteristics in our uh, uh, multivariable analysis may not be the right way for go for it. So some some scientists, some researchers 
they say that we may not need this presenting this p value in the table one restriction can be another way of controlling for a potential confounder at the design stage and when we say design stage we actually say we actually mean uh, at the beginning of the study when we are conducting the study when we haven't finished data collection yet in the process of data collection or in the process of designing the study uh, implementing the study recruiting study participants uh, assigning the interventions so in through restriction we can limit study participants to one category level of the potential confounders you might remember this example that we discussed in the uh, confounding part one presentation in epi minutes where we showed that there was an association found between being a male and malaria but later we found that outdoor was playing the role of a potential confounder that was mixing with the effect of male on malaria and showing a positive association but actually there was no relationship between male gender and malaria rather it was outdoor occupation that was uh, actually uh, having an effect on malaria and that was mixing with males and causing that uh, confounding effect so what could we do in terms of restriction how about we restrict our study to only among the outdoor workers then we can get rid of this mixing of effect of, of occupation indoor outdoor and male gender or male female gender on malaria Controlling confounding at design stage matching. This is another way of controlling for confounding at the design stage and It restricts selection of the comparison group according to the potential confounder Again, if we go back to this how we should How we can do matching in this case suppose we are doing uh, A case control study for example, we are finding malaria cases and if you wanted to match and what is your exposure of interest in this case if your exposure of interest was gender and then you knew that out occupation whether it was been been done it, it was being done in outdoor or indoor settings could be a potential confounder in this case you, if you find a malaria case you are doing a case control study and if you are enrolling a control that control you could uh, and if the case is an outdoor worker then you might choose a control which is also an outdoor worker and by doing that you are actually doing matching on potential confounders given that is not your exposure of interest now there are some implications of matching in cohort study non-exposed subjects have same distribution of match factors as exposed subjects and matching factor no longer remains as a potential confounder which is good in a case control study we need to be a bit careful even if we match on the potential confounders while we select the cases and controls we still may need to do matched analysis so in the analysis stage we'll ha also have to take care of the potential confounders so we have talked about controlling for a potential confounder at the design stage through randomization restriction and matching now what can we do at the analysis stage when data collection have been conducted has been conducted now we are analyzing the data there are different ways we can control for potential confounders one is stratification and stratification can be done through a stratification and pooling and standardization this is a big slide busy slide but i thought that i would put everything in one single slide so stratification and pooling is kind of divide and conquer it we do try tend to divide the data into groups or strata according to categories of a factor which can be the potential confounder within each stratum we tend we calculate stratum specific measure of the association and if appropriate we then pool information over all strata by calculating average stratum specific measure of stratum specific measure of association or weighted measure of association and 
weights assigned to each stratum specific measure of effect should reflect the amount of information associated with measure and there is a way of doing that uh, mental Hansel summary measures are used for pulling now I mentioned about assumptions for pulling if appropriate so we need to make sure that the effect being estimated is constant across the strata if that is true only then we can go for pulling otherwise we need to just present the stratum specific uh, estimates because in that case effect modification is actually present and uh, we can do test of heterogeneity or test of homogeneity to statistically evaluate this assumption of uniformity of effect now let's go back to the same example of male gender as a risk factor for malaria i showed this table before it was a uh, case control study there were 150 cases and 150 controls of them among the cases uh, 88 were males among the controls 68 were males by just doing eyeballing we can say that there is there was something happening more cases more males were there among cases as compared to controls now if you want to calculate odds ratio from that from this so 88 by 62 divided by 68 by 82 and then we know that odds ratio eventually turns into a cross product ratio so 88 multiplied by 82 divided by 62 multiplied by 68 so we got an odds ratio which is 1.71 which says that the odds of being male among the cases was 1.7 times higher as compared to odds of being male among the controls so there was an increased likelihood of developing malaria among the males this is what they found in that study now was there a potential confounder yes we found that outdoor occupation was a potential confounder and in our previous presentation we tested all these all the three characteristics of a potential confounder and we pro prove uh, we had proven that yes outdoor occupation was a potential confounder now how to control for that now we need to do a stratified analysis and we did a stratified analysis in this case we did separate calculation of odds ratio uh, between May gender and malaria and the separate calculation was done among those who were out who had mostly outdoor occupation and who had mostly indoor occupation and you can see that after stratification by the different levels of potential confounder in this case it was occupation whether it was outdoor or indoor we can see that there is actually no more association between gender and developing malaria because the odds ratios both are very close to one and in this case we actually could do pooling because they were similar across different strata but there was no point of doing that because it was close to one and so if we look at the summary of the data we can see that the crude odds ratio was 1.7 crude means when there was no adjustment for any potential confounder we were just looking at the gender and malaria and then we adjusted for outdoor work and we found that the adjusted odds ratio came down to close to one so we actually adjusted for potential confounder of outdoor occupation when we were looking at the association between gender and malaria now can you tell me what was the direction of confounding in this case what confounding was co doing in this case when we were looking at the crude odds ratio we found that the unadjusted odds ratio was away from the null so it was actually overestimating the association now stratification it may not be practical for controlling for many potential confounders at once if you are trying to control for gender 
age and smoking status by doing stratification you can see how many substrata you could have and it can be a nightmare so don't try to control for many potential confounders by doing stratification standardization it is another way of controlling for potential confounder at the analysis stage and it is a way of combining category specific rates into a single summary value by taking a weighted average of them and the weights they come from a standard population we'll talk about standardization in more details in a separate epi minute presentation in future can you guess what i'm going to talk about next yes why i was late for school again and can you remember why you were getting late at school it is not because of a one single reason it was multifactorial maybe one morning i woke up late on the other morning i woke up on time but i took some time i took longer than expected in taking my breakfast or maybe in another morning everything went well but then i spent longer time in the toilet and then i could not find my shoe and then there was a traffic so it is multifactorial and when there are many many different reasons for an outcome to happen we go for regression models and among them if you are looking at a particular exposure and a part and the and that outcome you need to control for the other potential confounders which can also independently cause the outcome and for doing that regression models can be very useful here is an example passive smoking at work and risk of heart attack or coronary death and in this example you can see the crude odds ratio and also the adjusted odds ratio and the adjusted odds ratio were adjusted for a few base few characteristics of the study participants and we can see there is a slight difference between the crude and adjusted odds ratio and this is how we control for potential confounders at the analysis stage using regression and we try to come up with more robust estimate of the association between an exposure of interest and an outcome of interest thank you very much for joining with me again and staying with me in this presentation if you have any questions or comments feel free to post it in the comment section of this video I hope to get back to you again and talk to you more about epidemiology in future. Thank you.